features. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The drain. Hey, Nolik, come help me. The fan in the computer needs dusting. Not right now. Me and Tom Thomas are painting a card for his parents' anniversary. Oh, look, who are you? You must be so tired. Hi, Simka. It's really great you're here. I have a question. Twelfth anniversary, is it spelled with an F or is it with a V? Uh, you know what? First put down the number 12, and then put a dash on there, and then a TH. Oh, right. But first I'll change the water. I'll be right back. Oh, Mama left her ring here. Whoa! Uh, no, uh, uh, no! Oh, no, what have I done? Uh, I spoiled my mom and dad's... Uh, Special day. Where? In the bathroom? My mom's ring was lying there, and, and I dropped it into the sink, and now it's washed away. Uh, there goes the day. It didn't wash anywhere. Don't you know anything about how a drain trap works? About a what? A drain trap's a special curved pipe under the sink basin. Water flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap. And after that, it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Well, that means we still got a chance. Yeah, but how in the world can we get it out of that trap? Who knows? I don't know how to swim. Don't worry. It's all under control. Do you have any thread? Plenty of it. Go get it, and I'll be back in a flash. Hmm. I can't fix it like this. I need my welder. Papoose! I need to borrow your pack a mat for a little while. Now that's a coincidence. I need to use it, too. Masia, then I need to use your pack mat What? I'll bring it right back. Hey, where are you going? Just watch what you're doing, dear. Just like the name says, Fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and Fixies are very small, so they can't get by without tools. Long ago, Fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called pack mats Inside a pack mat are all sorts of tools. Just push the button and the pack mat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult Fixie has their own pack mat But before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged Fixie. And it's only after all of that that young Fixies get their own pack mats And what? You're going down there with just that on? Not just like this. <laughs> yeah, like that. Huh? She was just saying, when I tug on the thread, you need to pull me up. I got it. He just said, I got it. She said, she doesn't need me to repeat what you say. You, you really saved the day. 
I said that's what fixies are for. Tom Thomas, who are you talking with in there? Oh, your mom came back. No one. Hey, can you turn back into fixies? I gotta ask you a question. I forgot, should I write 12th anniversary with an F or do I write with a V? Just write the number. You're right. I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him by the flag. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your, your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The motion sensor. This part has to be replaced with one that's new. I've got an idea. How about we run to the warehouse and get it? Because you don't have time to go there. And that way you can keep on working. All right then. Only remember the code for the part. A8375. I'll remember it for sure. Why is Elisa always there at the wrong time? Do we have to wait till she goes away? <laughs> what for? We'll sneak out behind her. Did it? Did you find the part? It's here. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah we're, we're ready. ready. Let's do it. Ah, Professor Eugenius, you're in here. Uh, do you know why this door just opened? Ah, and closed by itself? Ah, of course I know, Elisa. It's because I converted it into an automatic one. You see, I installed a motion sensor above it. A motion sensor is like an electronic eye that watches everything that moves in front of it. Did you ever wonder how doors open by themselves at places like stores or at the airport? They open with the help of motion sensors. If the sensor sees that someone walks up to the door, it sends a signal to the door's electric motor. The electric motor opens the door and then automatically closes it after the person walks through it. That man is just astounding. Only a bit untidy. The door is automatic now? Then why didn't it open for us on the way here? Because we're too little for that motion sensor. But the part's bigger than we are. Big enough for the sensor to see it. Then how do we get in there? We can fool that thing if we stay close by the wall. Now let's keep this as close to the wall as we can. This door is a little too automatic. And these parts are here again. Didn't I put them away? Ah, the sensor still noticed us. Here's what we gotta do. Let's break it. Why do we gotta break it? All we have to do is deactivate the unit. Sensors are used to help people in all sorts of different situations. For instance, motion sensors notice when someone is moving so they can automatically open a door or turn on a light. Some automobiles are equipped with rain sensors. If it starts raining or snowing, the sensor automatically turns on the car's windshield wipers. There are also sensors that react to how much light there is. In the evening, when it gets dark, light sensors can be used to turn on street lamps. And in the morning, when it gets light again, the sensor switches them off. A smoke detector can sense when there's smoke inside. The sensor can be used to turn on a fire alarm or even an automatic fire extinguishing system. I turned it off. That should do the trick. Great job. Let's go. Titties! <laughs> Professor 
your genius. Mission accomplished. Well done, Fixies. Uh, actually, not that well. This part here is A7583. Uh-huh. And I asked for A8375. Digit, didn't you say you knew the code number? I did know it, but somehow forgot it. Ah, uh, Digit, I can't believe that you forgot it. All right, we'll just have to go out one more time. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll get it this time. I forgot to warn the professor that we've turned off the sensor. And I'm afraid he's expecting that the door will automatically open up. Professor! Stop! You don't. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The cell phone. Hey, Nolik, come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Mossy and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business, a work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi, Dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing. The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. <sighs> Not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give them a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not gonna talk to them. We're just gonna listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone! The phone part is not what she's asking you. Oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! 
Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Check out our fixie ringtone! It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hop! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... 
look. What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. Oh. <gasps> Monsters. Hey, what do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I gonna fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find nightlights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a nightlight here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your nightlight. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, <sighs> do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoose was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. <sighs> and I'm not sure if it was Grandpoose, but it was a clock, I think. a new one? Oh, wow! No, like, stop! Awesome! Darf. Turn around! Oh. Tom Thomas, help us, please! We're trying to save your telephone! That's not mine. Oh! Katya left it behind! Katya! Katya! She's gone, it's too late. Oh, an SMS just came in. You won't read it, will you? Of course not. But what if it's something important? Tom Thomas, don't you even dare go and read her letters. Uh-huh, pretty interesting. Looky, there's just a ton of these messages. Now, Nolik, you go and distract him from the telephone. Uh-huh. Done. 
Well, power's off now. Huh. What's up? It stopped working all of a sudden. Oh, it looks like you've broken it. What? No way. You did too. Well, Tom Thomas, now you have to give Katya your phone back like this. I just don't get it. It happened because you were reading someone else's mail. It was just an SMS. An SMS is no different from a letter. It's only shorter. People send SMSs through their mobile phones. And that's why looking inside someone else's phone and reading their SMSs is just as rude as reading someone else's mail. And that's why when we fixies work inside of a phone, we always put our headphones on when a call comes in. So we won't overhear people's private conversations by accident. It's just the polite thing to do. I promise I won't read anyone else's messages. But that's not going to make the mobile work again. Now what? Tell them the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, Tom Thomas, because we turned the phone off. And now we'll turn it back on. See that? The contact's barely attached. We just need to write a note to the Fixies who work over at Katya's. I'm sure they'll fix it. There are Fixies living in every home, and the work they have to do can seem endless. The TV starts acting up, then the doorbell breaks, the washing machine stops running, and then the phone won't ring. And besides all of that, there is cleaning and there's oiling. Like the appliances in the kitchen or kids' toys and all those other things. Modern houses are literally stuffed with all sorts of devices. And that is why the Fixies keep working day in and day out. Unfortunately, this can make Fixies get carried away by their jobs. And they can forget about their Fixie relatives and close friends that live in the neighboring houses and apartments. And that's not right. Just like humans, Fixies have to remember to go and visit each other more often and write each other letters, or at least send their regards. That's all. It's working again. You're the best. Now I can give a call to Katya and tell her she left her phone over here. Tom Thomas! Is that you calling? Yeah. And to who? Katya. And her phone is where? <laughs> 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 What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't. Did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La 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 la. And that's five, six. Ooh, I like this hairstyle. Seven. Hello, Verda. Oh, uh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive, but go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. 
laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode. Marcia, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go, uh... quickly! Marcia, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so good you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Ah, oh, bear! Oh, me! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka and Nolik? There! They're all there! Oh, my children! Don't lose your head! Oh! Oh! Masya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care. Because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik can get himself into situations that even Masya could never have dreamed of. So it's Simka we need to save, not you? I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Nolik, was this your fault? Oh, no. It's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> Huh? Uh. Tideesh! Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But fire said... Why fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. The goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores! Yay! Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? 
No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do Tom. it. You, you can, can do, do it. it. Yeah. Go. concert pants. Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Oh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler is really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time and a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space, and the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate, and that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go. The papers are fastened. So you can say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way. Or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. 
The suction cup. <laughs> Where's Professor Eugenius? Did you see him? Not yet. Strange. He told me he'd be here today to conduct some tests. Rampus, right here under the glass. There's a note. Hmm. Dear friends. That means the note's for us. That's because Professor Eugenius can always count on us. I'm off for a conference today. So what should we do? While I'm away, please keep an eye on each of my tests. There's the wristwatch. And where is it? It's right there. Look! How come the watch is in the water? So the fish can know what time it is? No, like, don't be silly. This is the test he made for the watch. You see? It says water resistant right there on the back. That means that water shouldn't get inside of it. I see. So the professor needs to check if it will work underwater. Understand? I, yep, I got it. The watch is working. So now, the doorbell test. We'll go look. It's over there. What's that thing doing? It tests the button to see how fast it wears out. <laughs> to check the quality of appliances, toys, sporting goods, or just about anything, they need to undergo serious testing. Take, for instance, telephones. They need to be tested with both heat and cold because they have to work in places as hot as Africa and as cold as the Arctic. Computers are tested to make sure they can be shaken and rocked, too. That way you can be sure they'll work on a desk at home or outside in the park or while you're taking a ride. Different kinds of products need different kinds of durability tests. For example, athletic shoes and car tires are rubbed and squeezed over and over to see how long they are going to last. Yes, testing's very important. Without testing, a machine or appliance could let you down at the very worst moment. If guests come to visit once a week, and once every month a hooligan comes, pushes the doorbell and runs, then I figure this doorbell will last right around 400 years. That's long. The doorbell is still working. That's very good. And also, uh... What? I don't know. We need to turn the note over to read the end. But how? Oh, raise the glass, that's all. We should find a suction cup. A suction cup? Suction cups are made out of rubber or other elastic materials. When a suction cup is pressed against a smooth surface, the air inside is squeezed out. The air outside wants to get back in, and so it pushes down on the cup. The rubber edge of the cup won't let the air leak in, so the outside air keeps pressing down and the cup keeps on sticking. And that's how a suction cup sticks to a surface by using the power of air. Wait a minute. I know where there's a really big suction cup that we can use. <gasps> that's a huge suction cup, Nolik. Diddies, diddies, diddies! Well done, Nolik. Only we need to hurry before air gets under this suction cup and it unsticks. My suction cup will never unstick. Well, let's see what it says here. Simka, you'd better hurry! And make sure nothing gets broken here in the laboratory while I'm away. Huh, and what could get broken around here? Ah, the glass! Look out! Yeah, so much for that. And who's going to clean up all this broken glass? <laughs> you don't know? Nolik! He told us to use that suction cup. No, Simka! She was reading way too slow. Listen, there's no need to fight. I came up with the idea of the suction cup. I should clean this. 
Come on now, Grampus. We'll clean up this mess. Professor, I still think the suction cup was a great idea. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm going to pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? <laughs> mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom, Thomas, you're a genius. But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With a temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ugh. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. 
Dave, what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Papu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? Fixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Secret out. The pack a mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the pack a mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it. <gasps> You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. He did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pack -a, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was going to be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you going to ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Ah, uh, I'll never pass it. You will. He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. Thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember. <laughs> the topic I changed. It's a hammer. You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. Just be careful. 
That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Krampus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> a drill is such a great tool in Great tools, yes, indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack of mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. 